Jordan Peele's Nope came out this weekend to a pretty awesome reception. It's Peele's third film, and at this point it feels like he's completely arrived as a name people get excited about when he has an upcoming project. Dun -dun. But there was an interesting conversation that was created. Was this a slight disappointment for what people have come to expect from Peele's initial duo? And to what level is that put on our own expectations? Dun -dun. Peele's style has seemed to be influenced by Hitchcock with his first feature, Get Out but has definitely changed it up from project to project. One of my favorite aspects of him as a director is he is very open about what projects he's drawing from, and this one the most in wearing its influences on its sleeve. Da -da 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 -da! Nope, in a lot of ways, is a Jaws film, and in doing so, that creates an immediate comparison to place on with this film, one that sets a very high bar. And I say this in hopes of evoking something out of you. Jaws is simply a better film than Nope, but do you care? I asked this question because I couldn't help fixating on this statement after seeing the film and while there are Jaws parallels, there is something striking about how Nope's central message complicates the comparison to Jaws. Because although I loved certain elements of Peele's junorial, new word I'm coining, Spielberg-esque effort, it's actually the typical Peele message that overcomplicates things for me. But before getting into Nope spoilers, let's talk about Jaws. Jaws is regarded as the first summer blockbuster that would pave the way for the landscape we see today. What's really interesting is the behind the scenes of Jaws were a complete mess, due to complications with the mechanical shark working and it being the first film to shoot on water, Spielberg went 100 days over the production schedule. Jaws was not supposed to be a success, but yet here we are with an unintentional masterful method of creating tension due to technology being difficult. Like imagine if some boomer didn't know how to work a flash drive and now Morbius is suddenly a masterpiece. I only bring this up as a reminder that in the film landscape, even in the 70s, things were relatively new. So much so that Jaws being a film solely about Giant Shark was seen as wholly original for its time. That is not to say that if you take Jaws and plop it into the theaters today, it would do nothing. It's more to say that the film space is drastically different than it was nearly 50 years ago that even a really well-crafted and written film about the lads chasing after a shark might not be the highest grossing film of that year. You have to add pizzazz to add the draw other than a grand old time that you'll enjoy. We need to be bigger and bolder! But even still, with almost half a century of film to compare, people are still returning to Jaws. Why is that? Maybe it could just be its importance in film, but more than that, there's an epicness to the story of Jaws. Although the story is simplistic, as mentioned, the characters feel realized and have depth. To the point that one of the defining scenes in the film is the three of our core characters sharing about themselves before their final battle with the shark. There's something impactful about these human moments that leave a lasting impression more than just really well done thriller elements. And speaking of that, in positioning these attacks to be anyone instead of just the main characters creates this suspense for the everyman, that this could happen to anyone at any beach without warning. My point in bringing this up is by directly drawing a lot of inspiration from something, you put yourself in immediate comparison to that very thing especially from a director that could be on a similar trajectory like Spielberg in terms of influence. So naturally, Nope is put on a whole different pedestal than something like, say, The Meg. But enough about Jason Statham's gruff bald film. We need to spoil Nope. Let's talk about the monkey. Hey, hey, monkey. monkey. As mentioned, Peel takes direct inspiration from Jaws and isn't hiding that from the audience. Where it overcomplicates itself is its core message with Gordy. Gordy the monkey is a shocking part of the film that Jordan Peele doesn't make us look away from. He's the driving force for the importance of Steven Yeun's character, Jupe. In this film, we're shown a lot of animals being exploited to drive a certain sensation, whether it be the horses being in films, an ape on a sitcom set, or an alien being used as a method to break into stardom. This message is clear, but is it necessary? This question only persists because we have evidence of Jaws. In Spielberg's film, there isn't a real question about ethics of taming this beast. It's a force we are rooting to be tamed by our protagonist. However, in Nope, things are a little bit trickier. In this film about exploitation being bad, our protagonists are also wanting to exploit a creature as mentioned, which seems to be contradictory to the fun of a classic film like Jaws. 
This movie is both trying to evoke this spectacular, sweeping blockbuster set pieces that it's terrific at, but they juxtapose it with condemning spectacle. The film spends a lot of time on these scenes. Should it be focused on the simplicity of something like Jaws? No. Although Jaws may seem on paper a better film than Nope, why does it matter? Why is this the evocative piece that elicits something out of people, I say hoping this video doesn't get six views? There's a rush to dump everything about a film we can. Do a quick YouTube search of Nope and you're immediately welcome to dozens of explanations trying to make it all make sense to you. And this isn't me dispelling these types of videos from being made or disparaging the people that check them out. But rather, it's an omission that the movie culture as a whole has evolved to a different spectacle now. There was no everything you missed from Jaws or what the shark actually meant in the 70s. And even if there was a platform like that, there's no telling a film like that would even be successful with different demands of the audience from that time period. For instance, Empire Strikes Back was famously given a mixed reception for its shocking twist in a darker story, something it's now regarded for as being a classic. We churn movies out and grind them into any piece of content we can. That's why you'll find a dozen of these Nope explained articles and videos because they do well, and this isn't excluding me. Nope exists as its own piece of art. Why do I feel the need to compare it to all of Jordan Peele's existing filmography? Why even though they bear comparison do I feel the rush to compare this film to Jaws, a film released so far removed from where we are now? Although Nope muddies the waters of a classic film like Jaws, Maybe that's the point that I was missing. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're an no, idiot. No. You're an idiot and you don't know baseball. I'm You're not the, idiot. No, you are an idiot. There's a reason Peel chose Jaws to be his direct reference to this film. Not Close Encounters or War of the Worlds or Jurassic Park. This man intentionally picked Jaws. Part of this could be because of the nostalgic statement this film is making. But maybe it's not because it's a great film, more so what Jaws represents. Jaws showed the world that we ate up the spectacle of fear of a shark. Although Jaws is now known for being an incredible story, the fear of the shark and it being one of the first films to be heavily advertised created the excitement. The spectacle is what drove people to the film. So much like an accident on the side of the road, we can't help but look away to see what happens next. The landscape now is full to the brim of sensationalism, so maybe the message isn't condemning it, more a reflection of where we are in the world today. The Bible verse referenced at the start is not meant to be seen as a prediction, but a precursor for the abominable filth and spectacle we're already in the middle of. In condemning the treatment of animals for spectacle in this film, it isn't condemning our characters for also chasing after that spectacle, but rather making an admission that filmmaking and art have been saving less than a little room for Jesus on the dance floor when it comes to exploitation. This idea is shown in tandem with the intentional blackness of the story, the familial tie to the original man filmed on a horse whose name has been lost to history, the Oprah shot, the main character being named OJ. And the reason that Jaws and the Western were used as references for this film. There's an inherent fixation with black culture without wanting to credit the people involved with that. Elvis, Driving Miss Daisy, open any book about sports history. This is inherently attached baggage on making films, but if the sensation is still going to be presented almost as if it were a force of nature, at least our two leads should be the one reaping the benefits, right? 